Welcome to Liberate University. Namaste, dear friends, and welcome to this uplifting devotional chanting meditation to commemorate Krishna Janmashtami, which is a very spiritual and auspicious celebration for the birthday of Sri Bhagavan Krishna. So, Bhagavan Sri Krishna is a very highly powerful avatar or guru from the spiritual tradition of India and he's in fact revered as one of one of the most powerful deities from Hinduism. Now, Sri Krishna is an avatar who came as a guru or a prophet or a master in the higher ages. And so he built his own kingdom in the higher ages and had a very special dispensation, which meant he had a special role that God sent him on earth so that he would bring souls back to the bosom of God. So basically, Bhagavan Shri Krishna is another spiritual master, just like Christ, who incarnated on earth for this very special divine mission, which was to awaken spiritual consciousness in receptive souls and in souls that were ready to follow him and to become liberated in spirit. So Bhagavan Shri Krishna is actually one of the avatars or gurus that are revered in the SRF lineage that Paramahansa Yogananda established here in the West. And Paramahansa Yogananda explains that Bhagavan Shri Krishna had a very special dispensation, which was this, to elevate other souls, to help them feel and connect with the love of the divine, with the love of spirit. So Shri Krishna, having already attained the highest level of, of spiritual consciousness, which is Krishna consciousness or Christ consciousness, this is the same, perfected spiritual consciousness that a savior or a master can attain, came for this reason on earth. And in fact, the most revered scriptures from India or the most revered um, sacred scripture from India is called the Bhagavad Gita. It's basically almost like the Hindu Bible, you could think of it this way. And this sacred scripture is part of the Mahabharat, which contains all of the Vedas, the sacred teachings of India. So the Mahabharat is a portion uh, of the Bhagavad Gita and vice versa. The, the Gita is a portion of the Mahabharat as well. And so in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains the spiritual science of meditation, emphasizing Kriya Yoga as the highest spiritual technique for liberation. And so Paramahansa Yoganandaji described Krishna in his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita with the following words. He said, Krishna is the divine exemplar of yoga in the East. Christ was chosen by God as the exemplar of God union for the West. The Kriya Yoga technique taught by Krishna to Arjuna and referred to in Gita chapters 
4.29 and 5.27 and 28 is the supreme spiritual science of yoga meditation. Secreted during the materialistic ages, this indestructible yoga was revived for modern man by Mahabhatar Bhavaji and taught by the gurus of Self-Realization Fellowship, Yogoda Satsanga Society of India. So here, Yoganandaji gives us a very clear explanation of the divine role of Sri Krishna. So this was his special dispensation as a great avatar in the East who actually lived much earlier than Christ. He brought, developed, and taught this spiritual ancient science, Kriya Yoga, which is now being imparted through the blessings of uh, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, especially through his organization, Self-Realization Fellowship. And so, now with this understanding, we can help ourselves get in tune with these sacred, highly elevated vibrations of Sri Krishna. So, just as with Christ, we can feel the divine love in our hearts and think of that divine love being the love of Krishna. And so Krishna, his special vibration or energy was love or is love because as an avatar, he, steals, he still lives in the world and in cosmic consciousness. And being an, a manifestation of divine love, we can always attune to him and feel his great divine love pouring in our hearts and overflowing all of our being. Another very important aspect of Krishna was that he was both a king and a great guru, meaning he knew how to live in the world but not of the world. So he came to teach that beautiful balanced path of what Yoganandaji also taught as meditation plus right activity. So it was very important to understand this point in the sacred teachings of Kriya Yoga because when we reach a balanced state of spiritual living, we come to understand that we need both meditation and right activity. And this is uh, beautifully explained in this paragraph from Yoganandaji uh, describing the nature of Bhagavan Sri Krishna in the following words. He says, we hear of saintly ascetics or prophets in the woods or secluded haunts who were men of renunciation only. But Sri Krishna was one of the greatest exemplars of divinity because he lived and manifested himself as a Christ and at the same time performed the duties of a noble king. His life demonstrates the ideal not of renunciation of action, which is a conflicting doctrine for man circumscribed by a world whose life breath is activity, but rather the renunciation of earth-binding desires for the fruits of action. So, with this divine example of Sri Krishna's balanced life, we can also follow that same balanced lifestyle of meditation and right activity. And especially when we can tune ourselves with the divine love in our hearts and in the divine love permeating the whole universe, we know that everything is established in love. Everything is permeated by this divine love from Krishna. So when we know that only love is real, then we can automatically and effortlessly, smoothly follow a balanced life, right? So whatever outer conditions confront us, whatever outer circumstances happen in our lives, they cannot affect us because we already know that in essence, we are divine love. And being divine love, how can we be affected by, you know, 
these insignificant things that sometimes happen in our lives, which, you know, the ego tends to want to make them, you know, like a drama or a big deal. But, you know, in reality, that is all very insignificant. As long as we are constantly trying to keep making the effort to improve ourselves and change, all these things won't matter to us anymore. Okay? So, now, in this sacred uh, uplifting session, we'll use this time together to attune ourselves with the divine, holy, and sacred vibrations of Lord Bhagwan Shri Krishna. And this very species during Janmashtami, we can do it anytime. In, in this way, we can feel true bhakti, true devotion in our hearts, which is the key that opens the door to cosmic consciousness, to the ultimate state of Nirvikalpa Samadhi. We all want to experience this state. It's our birthright. It's within our essence and within our being. So we'll have a very sacred session, and together let us dive deep into the stillness of meditation through devotional chanting. So first thing, we'll get in our right meditation posture, okay, which I'll explain br briefly. Then we'll open up with a prayer, and then we'll get into our devotional chanting session in which we will chant a very special cosmic chant called My Krishna is Blue, followed by Spirit and Nature, both cosmic chants composed by Paramahansa Yoganandaji. Then we'll get into our meditation session and we'll then close our session together. Okay? So, let us get on our right meditation posture. Very simple meditation posture, spine straight, shoulders back, chest out, abdomen in, palms can be upturned, resting on the thighs, and very importantly, the gaze of the eyes resting on the point between the eyebrows, so gently uplift the gaze at the point between the eyebrows, all right? And this is the Krishna Consciousness Center, also known as Kutasta Chaitanya. And we chant with devotion from this center. And as we chant with devotion, we can visualize the sacred divine form of Bhagwan Shri Krishna. We can, we can visualize him there on the spiritual eye and throughout the whole meditation session, okay? So, now that we're established in the right meditation posture, let us just practice a brief pranayam exercise, breathing exercise, where we'll inhale through the nostrils for a count of about six seconds. We'll hold the breath for the same count, and then we'll exhale through the mouth through the same count, all right? We'll practice this about three times total. So let us begin together. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Now let us fold our hands and pray deeply with devotion from our hearts, invoking God, 
in the personal aspects of father, mother, friend, beloved God. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Great Gurus of Self-Realization, Saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Lord, Bhagwan Shri Krishna, teach me to chant and to pray with deep concentration and to imbue scientific meditation with devotion. May my heart daily become more pure by all surrendering love for thee. Free my life from all obstacles of delusion and give me material, mental, and spiritual development. Om Shanti 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 Again, chanting Om a few times together. We're getting to the sacred cosmic sound, cosmic vibration of Om. Expanding our consciousness with Om. Feeling ourselves as one with Om.
So now, let us remain in the right meditation posture, with spine straight, the gaze of the eyes gently uplifted at the spiritual eye, Krishna consciousness center in the body. And from here, let us keep visualizing Sri Krishna, the form sacred form of Sri Krishna, the spiritual eye. Let us dive deep into the stillness of meditation, enjoying the inner peace, the inner stillness, the inner bliss of deep meditation. Now, let us keep visualizing Sri Krishna with the spiritual eye, and let us visualize him 
surrounded by beautiful and radiant blue light. and feeling all of his great divine love, divine light. Flowing from his being, from his whole being, into our being. Filling us with that divine love that divine joy, that divine light that comes from Him alone. This is the true nature of spirit. Endless bliss, endless joy, endless divine love. And us being made in His image, we have all those qualities within ourselves. So. Let us now feel that. And we can also chant mentally Om Krishna Om, Om Krishna Om. As we keep visualizing him in the spiritual eye. So let us practice this together for a few more minutes.
Both are sacred for the session for the prayer of God. Father, my mother, friend, beloved God, we are gurus of self realization, saints and masters of all religions. We bow to you, beloved Lord, Bhagwan Shri Krishna. I lay thy feet above my blessings, all the flowers of my devotion. Free my life from all obstacles of delusion, and lead me safely to thy shores of divine glory. May thy love shine in the world. Sanctuary of my devotion. May I be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om Shanti 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 Jai Guru. J. Shri Krishna. Thank you so much, dear friends, beautiful, blessed souls, for having joined us in this sacred divine session. And may you feel always the divine love of Bhagavan Shri Krishna in your heart. And may you spread that love to all who cross your path. Namaste. Thank you for being a part of this class. We hope to see you at the next one.